end because you need those things. Firstly, can you tell me what your n is? Can you tell me what the sigma is? Now, before you go any further, stop. There's also one more number. <coughs> Do you see it? Do you see it? It says the 76 point. We haven't put that on paper yet. 76.3. What is 76.3? Why isn't it mu? It says what now? The sample mean. Are we ever going to know mu? No. If we knew mu, we wouldn't even have to do the problem, right? Because yeah. we're actually trying to estimate mu. You, you follow? Mm -hmm. So if you knew mu, why would you even do this? You'd be like, oh, the, the mu is 30. I, I'm 95% confident it falls between, well, yeah, you're 100% confident. You already know mu. Well, why would you even do this problem, right? So you're never going to know mu. You are going to know x bar. Seventy-six point three. So from here we're going to find our E. I know that our E is this formula. What I'd like to do on your own, I'll give you ten seconds. Fill that formula for me. So you take your critical value, you multiply that by your population standard deviation <coughs> divided by the square root, don't forget square root, of your sample size. So we should have the 2.575. We should have a fraction. 12.5 goes on the numerator. The square root of 40 goes in the denominator. Give me a little head nod if you got that far. Good. Just substituting stuff in now. Uh, of course, we're not going to. We're not definitely not going to round any of this stuff. If we start rounding things, your confidence interval is going to be off uh, by a little bit. Try to do this without rounding. If you'd like to do this without rounding, there's a couple ways you can. Uh, first thing you might want to do, you could figure out the square root of 40 and store that in your memory. That's, that's one thing you can do. Uh, you have a memory button on every calculator. Or, if you have one of your graphing calculators, take 2.575, multiply it by 12.5, press enter. Then press divide, put square root of 40, press enter. It'll give it to you without writing anything down. Have you done that? So you're working on it, working on it. Oscar, do you something? Yeah. What'd you get? What'd you get? 5.08. 5 5.08. 5.08? 5 5 so some confidence out here. Come on, you got it right. But 5.08. <laughs> Triumphant. Yeah, 5.08. Wait, wait, wait a second. Can this be greater than 1? No. Wait a second. Wait, wait. Can this be greater than 1? Are we dealing with proportions? Then that's a requirement that we don't have to keep. So if you're going, oh, wait a second, all my means are more than one. Yeah, the means. You're not dealing with proportions anymore. So you don't have to be between 0 and 1 anymore. You, you follow me on that? So E here is 5.01. <coughs> Okay, I need to show of hands if everyone's okay on getting that far. Raise your hand if you are. Yes, no? You guys on the left hand side? Alright. What do you do with that 5.08? What do you do now? Should say up there. Okay. Great. This should be very similar to what you did with your proportions, right? You took your p hat, you added e, and you subtracted e. Now we're not dealing with p hat, but we are dealing with x bar. You're going to take x bar, you're going to subtract e, and you're going to add e. That's going to create an interval for you. You see, this is the maximum difference allowable with a 99% confidence level uh, for this, this information. So we say, all right, if our point estimate is 76.3, I know that our confidence interval must be 
0.3 minus RE, 5.08. <coughs> all the way to 76.3 plus RE. <coughs> so if you do the math right, let's see, that should be 71.3, sorry, 2, 2. And here we should get, what was that? Let me do a very short, like, 30 second recap. Here's the idea. Hopefully you've seen the similarity between the proportions that we dealt with a couple times ago and these means. We're still having to find a critical value. We still got to do that. We're still finding our population proportion. We, we do it without the p hat and the q hat because we're not doing proportions anymore. We still have a sample size and we still have a point estimate. Only this time our point estimate isn't p hat, it's x bar. Because we're dealing with means now. We still find our e. It's still a critical value times the standard deviation divided by the square root of n. We're still doing that. The standard deviation is now only explicitly given to you. That's kind of nice. We still take that e, we add it to our point estimate. No problem. That's here. We subtract it from our point estimate, and that gives us a range of numbers. That gives us our confidence interval. How confident are we? So our interpretation is, is this, if you want to write this down again in, in quotations. <coughs> Don't know what the exact value of the population mean is. I don't know what the exact value of the population mean is. But I am 99% sure, or 99% confident, I'm 99% sure it will fall in this range between 71.2 beats per minute and 81.4 beats per minute. I don't know what the actual value is, but I'm 99% sure <coughs> it's going to be between 71 and 81, basically. Does that make sense to you? How many people feel pretty good about this so far? Good deal. Now, last thing we got to talk about. Uh, remember from last time we could actually find the required sample size to get a certain margin of error. You remember that? It was kind of cool. It was like, well, I only want a 4% margin of error. I can figure out what the sample size needs to be. We can do the same thing with this. We'll do a little bit of algebra. We'll do one example. Now we'll wrap up our section here. <coughs> So finding the required sample size for a given margin of error. Let's see if we can do that. Remember last time we solved everything for n, right? You remember that? So we're going to use our, our e. We're going to solve that thing for n. So my algebra people, how are you going to do it? Get n by itself. What's the first, first step? We can do that. This is being multiplied. Let's divide everything by z alpha over 2. What you're going to get is e over z alpha over 2 equals sigma the square root n. Still okay with that? You sure? Okay. What's that next thing I could do? Multiply what? Hmm? 
I don't want to multiply sigma. It's already being multiplied by sigma squared up there. I could divide that. Remember, I'm, I'm trying to get n by itself, right? I want to eliminate everything around n. Uh, one thing you can do here, it, you could reciprocate everything if you if you want to. Uh, you take both sides of negative one power that would reciprocate both fractions. It's legal to do. So <coughs> this, you can actually just go. Oh, same thing. Fancy algebra, isn't it? True statement. True statement. Well, at least I hope so. Otherwise, I've been doing math wrong my whole life. Still want to get n by itself. What else do I need to get rid of? Sigma. Now I can multiply both sides by sigma. I'll get z alpha over 2 times sigma over e equals the square root of n. Now, the square root of n isn't good enough. How do I get rid of the square root of n? Square both sides, that's going to give me n equals, I'm going to flip sides on you. n equals z alpha over 2 times sigma all over e squared. It's a little bit different than the other formulas. The other formulas, you, you square these two things individually and you multiply <coughs> by p hat, q hat, you're not going to do that now. You multiply everything all together, but do not forget to square it. If you forget to square it, you'll get the square root of the appropriate sample size. Instead of a sample size of 81, you'll get 9. Okay, you don't want to do that. So make sure you're squaring that number at the very end. Shall we do an example? Okay. So our example here, we want to construct a 95% confidence interval. For the average of IQ scores, we want to construct a 95% confidence interval for the average or mean of IQ scores. We've got to assume the population standard deviation is 15. And I want the sample mean to be within two points of the population. How big does that sample have to be? Oh my, okay, there's lots of stuff going on. Let's read through here carefully.